strong to be here. You know, uh, talking about dreams. And by the way, even though there's no popular term like Chinese dream, but Chinese do have dreams. You know, when I was little, when I was little, I had a dream of becoming a professional dancer because I love dancing. However, when I grew up to be a teenager, I, no matter what I tried, I just couldn't grow tall enough to qualify for the dance team of my high school. So then, later on, I realized, you know, your, your hobby doesn't have to become your career, and today, dancing actually become my most enjoyable way of exercise to keep me fit. And then when I was in, um, uh, in high school in China, I dreamed of getting to a top-notch you know, university, world's top university in the United States for my master's degree. So I worked really hard to excel in my grades. However, you know, in the last semester of my undergrad, out of all the uh, applications that I submitted to apply for college in the US, the only one offer that I got is from DePaul University in Chicago. Not even, you know, among the top 200 uh, ranking, you know, two, top 200 colleges in US ranking. However, it is in that normal university that I found my husband Ken and my roommate Lin, and who is today the biggest leader on my team, leading a 40 million hierarchy with three CEOs on our team. You know, that everything starts with a dream. I believe it's the first step that God uses in his process to change our life for the better. Some dreams actually help us to learn better about ourselves. Some dreams will actually connect us to important relationships. And some dreams will lead us to a lifetime career that we're gonna find our life purpose on this planet. You know, 18 years ago, my very first convention sold me a dream of making seven-figure income and having more freedom. And knowing that corporate job as a software engineer will not give me that possibility, so I made a decision in that convention and planted my flag in here. Now, 18 years passed by, many of my dreams already come true. And you know, one of the dreams that I had is to, to have a better, give a better life for my parents. And you know, uh, several months ago, I remember in one of the casual conversations my dad was, when my dad told me, he said, uh, well, m your mom and I will miss uh, your aunt and uncle and your grandma in China. So we really wanted to go back to China, but I wish my knee, my dad has some knee issues. So he said, I wish my knees will be in a better condition so that, so that I can stand the long, you know, long hour flight. So soon after that, without hesitation, Ken and I, we bought two business class flight tickets for them. And you know, my parents has never flight business class in their entire life. So you do not know how much, you know, I cannot describe how surprised and how overjoyed that they, they were when I told them, mom and dad, so you're gonna just lie down on the flight, you know, for 15 hours, just lying down and to, you know, lying down there and then get to China. And then, you know what, I, and I also told them that you're gonna do that, you'll be able to have this in the, in the, in the future every time that you miss your families over there. And that is a special moment for me. I'm grateful for this business. And sometimes people ask me, so how do we turn our dreams into reality? And it's interesting that when I look back that the road traveled by, I realized, you know, while we are working on our dreams, God is actually working on our characters. Because he wants to entrust us with the money and blessings that he's gonna give to us. So how does God work on, on, on our characters? He put tests on the road. And one of the tests is called delay. Because delay produces patience and endurance. I remember my ver very first five years in the business, 
I, since I planned that, I made a decision, I decided to work hard, and I did work hard. I quit my six-figure IT consulting job after one year in the business, and I started to travel a lot for, to build the remote teams. And, uh, but then after five years, at the end of the five years, we only, I only find ourselves to be in that end. We were only making like $67,000 a year, not even, you know, not, not even, it was even less than the half of my original corporate job income. And Ken also, you know, quit his job because of the company relocation. So we're, the, we're almost like, a, you know, barely make the, the life ends meet. So then, but at that time, during the toughest moment, I'm so glad that we did not quit and we kept showing up and we, we still pushed in and we still, you know, I still worked hard, I still stepped up and we just persisted it. Then you know what? Four years later, my income went from 67,000 to $1 million. And you know what? When I, looking back, when I look at my, my team, the same thing, the delay happens to everybody who actually achieves success in here. You know, it took Ling nine years to find Victor and Jenny, who finally committed to this business. Uh, and then it also, uh, it took Ling nine years to find Kim and Marcel, okay, who is a superstar and became EVC a millionaire in this business today. It took Victor and Jenny 10 years to find Beatrice, who became the first Kenyan CEO of WG today. You know, the hopeless end can become endless hope if we, if we keep showing up, stepping up, and dreaming up in the test of delay. And another test that God puts on the road is called difficulties. In WG, we face many difficulties. The difficulties of overcoming rejections, the difficulty of handling failure and success, the difficulty of dealing with difficult people, and also the difficulty of balancing the you know, life and work, the difficulty of resisting temptations. But it's in those difficulties that our characters are molded. If, there's, if we, we have never been rejected or defeated, how can we build resilience and mental toughness? If, I, if we have never worked with Difficult people, if we have never been hurt by someone, how can we develop the skill of loving people? If we have, if things always go as, as planned without times of chaos and confusion, how can we develop the real peace in us? If we have never been tempted to be bad, how can we claim us to be good? You know, temptation, I realize character development always involves a choice, and temptation develops that opportunity. You know, there are a period of time before that every Saturday night, at a certain time, I would be tempted to click on the YouTube and watch a Chinese drama series. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, and sometimes, was, sometimes I, I, I didn't resist that temptation, and then the temptation just say, hey, Sonny, you know, you can take a rest now. Just one episode, you know? And I, I, sometimes I gave in, but I regret every time I did it, because I couldn't, I just couldn't stop watching it, one episode after another, until I, it was so late at night and I got myself worn out. But sometimes I did resist that temptation, so I tell myself, okay, you know, Temptation, okay. And I decided to grab a book from my bookshelf and I started to read it. And every time I did that, I built self-discipline and self-control. <laughs> Similarly, when we defeat the temptation to be dishonest, we build integrity. When we, when we refuse to be prideful, we actually build humility. When we defeat the temptation to give up, we feel we were unstoppable for personal growth. Thank you, WG. I love you. I love these people. You know what? I hope you, I pray that you make this battlefield for you to win for your family and your community. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you.